This is stage seven, so this is going to be milling and glass infiltration of the um, coping that you designed on the Cerex software. So this is the milling unit. Um, you can see as we zoom into the little milling chamber, that's only about sort of 15 centimetres across that chamber, um, the two milling heads and the central arm that can move in and out that holds the block. This is the in-lab unit, which means that it has an extended um, milling arm on one side for the larger blocks so we can do multiple units. On the right hand side we have a cone shaped burr, on the left hand side we have one called a step burr and they're both diamond burrs. And this is an example of the blocks that will be milled. So at this stage the computer is requesting that we open the door and load the block into the chamber. So block and there's a notch on the little holder for the block that's glued onto the bottom of it that locates onto a notch on the arm and there's a little allen key that's held within the machine, it's all very neat and tidy um, and you just tighten this up finger tight and then as soon as you shut the door um, it will start the milling process or to be honest it won't start the milling process straight away, it starts a checking process and calibration process So the first thing it does is check that the uh, block is the correct size and that the burrs are um, still the size that it thought it was, it hasn't broken them or worn them uh, and that they're, um, they haven't been bent, so it will do this. It takes a, a few minutes to do that, we've edited it down there so we don't have to much at all. And then here you see the pump switch on and the lubricant being uh, lighter than the now the, the lubricant is water with a little bit of glycerin in and uh, it's also got air injected into it as well so it's a combined water glycerin and air uh, mixture and the water has three purposes it's to cool the uh, milling process down so the burrs don't overheat and degrade it's to act as um, a dust suppressant so that the chamber is kept um, clean and also it makes a nice little bath at the bottom so that when the milling is finished um, it can splash into a nice bath of water rather than the hard base. So this milling process takes around about 20 minutes to complete. You've got a few options here. We can use a stack block, which is a really long, um, about 45 millimetre long block, where we can load up several restorations to be milled and mill them all out of the same uh, block. You've We've also got a selection of materials that we can mill out of, so we can use the Instagram Illumina as we've got here, and we can use the Spinel uh, or the Zirconia, or indeed the YZ material. So you need to have a look at those and uh, uh, learn the differences between them. So it's finished. So this is about 20 minutes after it started. Um, you can hear the pump uh, pumping the water out the chamber in the background. Um, Allen key again, and in this particular case, the uh, the coping is stayed onto the block. And if you um, if you get hold of one of these and flex it, you'll find that it is actually quite flexible for a ceramic material. It's very it's like chalkless material. This stage, so it's very weak. You can't grab it in between your fingers and apply force, otherwise it's going to break. That's uh, the finished product. Then you can see it's quite neat. There's a small uh, little sort of spur which is attached into a block, which can just easily be broken away, like so. The next thing then is to um, try it on the die and make sure that it fits. Gently. Gently, yeah. Um, and we've got this machine working quite nicely now, so you should see that it has quite a quite a tight fit around the margin. We did, uh, we confess, put too much um, sort of virtual die space under this one, so it's a little bit loose. But it still fits nicely around the margins. What I'm going to do next is take a diamond burr and reduce that collar from around the, the margin area. I mentioned that in the, in the last demonstration that you can do it on the machine or you can do it by hand. We like to sort of go belt and braces at the minute, make sure that we get a nice marginal fit and then take the excess back with a diamond burr. It's very easy soft material. So once you've trimmed the die down it's mounted onto a platinum pin on a refractory base. Um, for placement into the furnace for a cleaning cycle. And this will burn any um, small particles and rubbish and bits and bobs um, away. Yeah, and it, it burns off the, lub the lubricant that might be in the material as well. So this is a small porcelain furnace. It's, it's, um, it's got a vacuum pump on it so it can suck the air out of the um, firing chamber as well. That's just it beeping to say that it's going up. 
Uh, it heats it up to around about a thousand degrees for the, for the cleaning cycle. You can see it uh, doesn't look a great deal different when it comes down because nothing's happened to it. That's about a 15 minute cycle there, isn't it? Yeah. With the slow heat up and everything. It comes oh. out. Get hold careful it. not to drop it like oh. that. <laughs> <coughs> And then once it's done it can go back onto the die and the next thing that you're going to see is that we're going to put uh, some blue coloured dye onto the um, coping and this just checks to make sure we haven't got any cracks um, or there's no cracks being caused by the milling process in the material. If there were cracks you'd see them as a dark line in the surface. It's with this material because the block has been manufactured um, under sort of industrial conditions under high pressure. The chances of a crack are quite thin. If you'd made um, an aluminum or zirconia coping by the slip casting technique, your chances of a crack or void are much much higher. And you can see in this steel, it looks really good and even. Yep. So the next stage then is to take some of the infiltrating glass. Uh, this is it. Comes in a small pot like this, and we just mix the glass powder with some distilled water, ideally, um, and mix it up to a, a runny paste. And you apply this, a, a, they say in the instructions, a good thick coat, so whatever that means, I don't know, but it, it wants to be about half a millimetre thick all over the surface. You do need to be quite careful about where you place this, don't you? Because in this example, um, you've got it a little bit near the margins. Yeah, when we fired this, you'll see uh, when it comes out of the furnace, the, the margin was touching the platinum pin, which allowed the material to, um, to run around the margin and onto the fitting surface of the, of the coping. Just speeding it up a little bit there so that you don't get too bored watching. A um, little bit more on the back. This is a ceramic brush that we're using to apply the material. Not that it's made out of ceramic, we used for ceramics. We'll talk a bit more about those in the next video. Yeah, you just need to get a good even coating on here, you don't need to worry too much. You're just using the brush there to flatten it down, when you just to brush the surface off them. Once it's fine, this, this material is not going to be on the surface of the coping, it's going to um, blot into the chalky substructure and the excess will be ground off. Again onto the platinum stand, carefully, like so, and then that's going to go off and into the furnace again, and this will go through a firing cycle now. Now this is significantly higher than the temperatures that the normal ceramics fire at, so this is going to be over 1100 degrees for about 30 minutes to allow that material to soak into the um, substructure. So this is it after the firing cycle and it's got a slight sort of toffee appearance to it hasn't it? It looks, it looks almost edible. Um, and what we're doing is just taking a diamond burr, using it very lightly on the surface, um, moving it around so it doesn't get too hot and we're gradually just taking that um, excess glass off the surface of the substructure. You can't really go wrong at this stage. When you get down to the substructure, you'll see it and you'll feel that it toughens up and you can't take any more material away. It really is a, it is a tough material now. This is just finishing off yeah. then. Last few bits. See, so it should have a nice even finish when you've, um, you've done it properly. Check it with your fingers for any rough edges. Okay. It's very nice though. Yep. And the next stage is to um, smooth out the surface of the substructure now with some aluminium oxide. Now this is 50 micron aluminium oxide and really you don't want it in your lungs. No. Um, so we've opened the door purely for photographic purposes so you can see what's going on because it's quite a foggy door yeah. and we didn't actually spray anything. Um, then we shut the door, it's all operated with this foot puddle, so down for go and uh, you give it a good even coating. Now if you've got a watch on or anything or you're fond of your fingernails or anything like that you need to be quite careful. Once that's done, again onto the platinum stand and it goes once more into the furnace and this is called the, the glass control cycle. So on we go again. This cycle is just melting all the little particles that might have been sort of abraded with the burrs together to make it one coherent piece. There it is. Ready for the build up. Okay, job done. Excellent.